like you said, there's there's hundreds of things, thousands. Me and my son was talking about it over the weekend. I was encouraged to write a notebook years ago and just start putting blessings in it or answer prayers in it, and I never have done it. And I said, son, please start. I mean, just in the last, he said, dad, you know, I, I, we need to, because he said, I could have quite a bit in it myself. But just thinking of something that I should have stood and shared just a couple of weeks ago, I let, got off at the courthouse, went home, got my van, went to race carpet and picked up a carpet for a small job, just a living room and hallway. My son was two or three blocks behind me, and I just smoothed, ran a stop sign. There's no other way to, I don't know how, what I was thinking. It was, it was kind of busy both ways. I was on the way to that job, and I guess that's what I was thinking about. But I got so close to a vehicle, I just hit my brakes as hard as I could. And I promise you, I thought it, I thought I heard just a little, just hit that vehicle. Of course, it didn't, it didn't stop, just kept going. But I thought I heard just a, I just had to pull over and just thank him for his protection because it was 100% my fault. I don't know what happened. So God, I'm thankful tonight just for that one thing out of, out of hundreds. <clears throat> what I want to start off with tonight is the question of whose are you? And in just a minute, we'll be going to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28. But before we get there, I want to ask how many of you would agree that our image is important? But what exactly do we mean by the word? It's important that we know what we're trying to define when we say the word image. Here's the English definition. The first definition is a representation of the external form of a person. Do you have a lookalike, an impressionist? As good as they are and as similar as they appear, they are not the same. The second definition it listed was the general impression that a person or organization or product presents to the public. This goes beyond looks. The general impression can be that you're rude, stuck up, snobby, positive, loving, kind, or compassionate. We've all learned that general impressions are often found to be false. You ask any abuse victim if their abuser's initial impression showed them who they really are. Never. You look no further on the news and you'll discover that the truth in most people's reputation, that it wouldn't know their character if they met up on the street. That's why those in public view, they pay large amounts of money hiring image consultants. These are people usually hired when someone has damaged their image with some kind of behavior that's come to the light that showed them to be something other than what they had been presenting, which leads to the question, who are they really? Image is deeper than appearance. <clears throat> you ever heard the term spitting image? And I know you have. <clears throat> it's something people say when they are comparing a son to a father or a daughter to a mother. And what they mean by it is that it's an exact likeness. It's evident that you came from your father. And they don't even have to be referring to looks at all. They talk like their dad or they walk like their dad. They respond like their dad. They have the same worth ethic. In fact, unless you understand the word spit, you wouldn't understand the phrase at all. And it's not necessarily talking about the liquid from their mouth, but to another bodily fluid that transmits DNA. And the term literally means you have the DNA of. There's a website called Trends, Twin Strangers. And I didn't even go to it, but I, I read about it during this that it exists to help people find their twins or their look-alike. It's believed that every person has seven other people who look just like them in the world. And DNA tests have been done on different people's look-alikes to see if there's actually any relation, and there's not. You can look alike on the outside, present something different, which appears to be one thing, but it's actually another, because image is more than looks. Please stand as we read God's Word. And let me start with this question and read you something from the very beginning creation story. And here's the question is, who are you? 
Verse 26, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image and the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we love you, and we praise you tonight, Father. We thank you for each person that's here tonight. We just ask that you help us to hear from you, that you open our ears, open our hearts. Father, just take me completely out of the way and help me share what you placed in my heart. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. I was looking up in the concordance. It said, let us make man in our image. And it said the repeated use of the plural, let us, in our image, according to our likeness, is consistent with the fact that there is one God in three persons. And what we know is the Trinity. In our image is an understanding of who man is. It begins with knowing that we are made in the image of God. Man is different from every other order of created being because he has a created consistency with God. This means there's also an unbridgeable gap between human life and angelic life. Nowhere are we told that angels are made in the image of God. Angels cannot have the same kind of relationship of love and fellowship with God that we can have. And here's a few things I found while studying it said. There's several specific things in man that show him to be made in the image of God. Mankind alone has a natural countenance of looking upward. Mankind alone has such a variety of facial expressions. Mankind alone has a sense of shame expressing itself with a blush. Mankind alone has a I'm sorry, mankind alone speaks. Mankind alone possesses personality, morality, and spirituality. There are at least three aspects to the idea that we are made in the image of God. It means humans possess personality, knowledge. We possess feelings, and we possess a will. This sets man apart from all animals and plants. It means humans possess morality, and we are able to make moral judgments, and we have a conscience. It means humans possess spirituality. Man is made for communion with God. It is on the level of spirit we communicate with God. John 24, John 4, 24 says, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. In our image, this does not mean that God has a physical or human body. God is spirit. Though God does not have a physical body, he designed man so his physical body could do many of the things that God does. See, hear, smell, touch, speak, think, plan. That's just a few of many others. The first thing God gave you was an image. To many people, <clears throat> too many people are trying to define themselves, find themselves, or create themselves. God gave you an image. If you want to find yourself, you find him. You were created in his image. If you want to understand yourself, who you were created to be, understand him, and you'll understand yourself more. <coughs> Notice it didn't say, let us make human beings in our image to look like us. It said to be like us because our image equals our character. Before God gave man something to do, he gave him something to be. Too many times we focus on our gifts and our talents and our achievements and our jobs and end up needing to hire an image consultant. And here's why. Your gifts will only take you as far as your character. 
will sustain you. Your character is only as strong as the temptation that you fall for. That's the reason God gave us an image of character first. So what exactly is character? It is a commitment to a set of values without compromise. Value equal the regard is to regard that something is held to deserve the importance, worth, or usefulness of something. And then, then values is a person's principles or standards of behavior or one's judgment of what is important in life. <coughs> if you value something, you take care of it. If you don't take care of it, it was never really of any value. An example of that is our marriage vows, honesty, or stewardship. Verse 27 through 28, it said, So God created man in his own image. <coughs> in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. God gave us something to be. Character, a value system for which we were to do something in the world. What we do, or how we do it, flows from our value system. The image determines the values, and the values determine how we take care of it. If we get the values wrong, we live wrong, we govern wrong, we manage valuable things wrong. Can anybody see why we may be suffering in a lot of valuable, important areas in this world? Character is a dedication to a set of standards without wavering. Standards are the bumpers in the lanes to guide our decisions to protect our values. Your standards will create for you character, whether it's good or bad. Standards. I do not tell lies. That means I value integrity and I value other people. Another standard. I do not steal. It means I value integrity and I value other people. I do not ride in a car with another woman alone equals I value marriage commitment. There are exceptions to this, but we have to protect ourselves and our marriages and our character, and y'all know what I mean. We, to, we are to abstain from the appearance of evil or wrongdoing. What is okay for some is absolutely not okay for others. Your standards confirm your character. I can make a pretty accurate assumption about your character based upon your standards. Failure in areas <coughs> failure in areas that are valuable is always tied to a violation of standards. No person has ever fallen morally who didn't first fail at establishing the right standard or fail at keeping that standard. King David at the time when kings go to war, David stayed home. When I was really young, my grandpa would pay us a quarter to sit behind him in his chair and, and scratch his back. It wasn't until many years later that I realized he was actually paying us to watch whatever preacher he had on the TV for that 30 minutes. And some very, very powerful preachers. And I know this one may be a matter of opinion, but Jimmy Swaggart was one of those at one time. And he was a great one before he gave in to temptation and hurt others. And before the fall came a violation of standards. Look at the damage that was done to the kingdom of God when Satan causes a great man of God to stumble and fall. And there's been so many. Correct understanding of image is important. Adam and Eve never had a government, no written law that must be followed or adhered to sh to shape their character. 
God never intended his creation to be governed by exterior means. He created them to bear his image and then self-regulate accordingly. A person of character does not need the police. They police themselves. It's against their very nature to do something contrary to their values. Therefore, they don't. People of character, of correct image, are self-disciplined. When we are not, bad things happen. Too many people try to live off their gifts and their charisma, and your gifts won't protect you. Matter of fact, they will often destroy you. Your gifts and your charisma will only take you as far as your character will sustain you. People don't fail because of the lack of gifting. They fail for the lack of character. And here's why. Every single one of us have an image crisis. Romans 8.29 says, for, him, for whom he foreknew, he also did predestine to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. God created you to be like him. But let's be honest, we're not. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every person has a different view of another person's image, and that's called perception. The character of a man, the integrity, that's who we are. Have you ever felt like you have a devil on one shoulder and an angel on the other? The devil said, tell them to shut up. <clears throat> the angels, be nice, have some compassion. And that's how we justify things in our minds sometimes. If we're not staying in the word of God and are as full of him as we can be, it's easy to start justifying some things and reason them out in our mind. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. And you might think about this in a couple of ways. The angel is your conscience. It inherently knows the difference between right and wrong, and it desires you to align yourself with the choices which lead to good. The devil is temptation, a second voice, which confuses our decision and makes attempts to choose a path for which will never lead to good. The Apostle Paul described it as a battle between the spirit and the flesh. <clears throat> We're going to dig into that just a little bit. I mean, if God created us in his image, why do we have this image crisis? If we were created to embody the character of God, why are so many of us are not? It's because there is another voice. After creation account in Genesis 1-2, we see something interesting. In chapter 3, the serpent shows up in the garden and he speaks to Eve, and she listens. His purpose is to get her to question what she was told by God, to convince her that there is a better way to get what she wanted. For God, verse 5, For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, <clears throat> Then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Verse 6, And when the women saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. She also gave unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And verse 7 says, The eyes of them were both opened, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And I thought they were like God. I mean, in Genesis 1.26, it says that we were made in his image to be like him. The enemy will always try to convince you to do something in order to be something that you already are. If you believe you're not accepted, then he will tempt you to do things to earn acceptance. If you believe you're not loved, he will tempt you to do things to create an image in order to be loved. If you believe that you can't or won't be forgiven, 
you will hide or lie rather than confess. In each case, he's trying to convince you to create a different image because you don't know who you are, who you really are to begin with. And when he can convince you to create an alternate image, shame immediately follows. Before the second voice, Adam and Eve had only had their father walking and talking with them. Decisions were easy because they knew who they were and they knew whose, knew whose they were. Once the second voice enters the picture, trouble sets in. Now we have a choice on each shoulder and they do not have the same purpose in mind. John 10.10 10 says, The thief's purpose is to steal and to kill and destroy. And my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. What does that mean for us? <clears throat> God's image in us, living out his character, which is our first voice, it leads to a rich and satisfying life. God's image in us, listening to the second voice, equals destruction. Whose image are you living out? Whose voice are you listening to? We can't blame our parents, our spouse, our jobs, or even the devil for where we are in life. You have been given an image, and you choose daily which image you will live out. Matthew 7, 24 through 27, this is an NLT. It says, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Through the rain comes and the torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house. It won't collapse because it's built on the bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it, it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on the sand. When the rains and the floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. What are you building your house on today? It boils down to this simple truth. It's wise to listen and follow God, and it's very foolish not to. That's why some of our churches are empty. Have you ever given some great wisdom godly wisdom to someone else only to watch them ignore it and listen to someone else. We know how it's going to turn out and there's nothing we can do to stop it. They are building their house on the sand. It's really frustrating to watch. I can imagine God watching me sometimes. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I listen to two voices too sometimes. We all do, I think, and don't realize it. Even after years of being a Chris Christian, I still entertain thoughts contrary to what God says as to the way of life. And you learn and instantly how to, to cast them down. And that's the way I was taught. It's, it's not a sin for what pops in your mind. It's what, how long you allow it to stay there and what you do with it. God gives us a way to fight it. In 2 Corinthians 10.5 in the NIV, it says, We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Don't listen. Don't follow. Lock it up. Why? Why? God's character lived out in us always leads to life. The crisis of character needs to be destruction. And here are a few questions to consider. Whose values are your values? Whose morality is your morality? Whose ethics are your ethics? 
Your values will determine your moral morality. Morality has to do with principles concerning what is right, wrong, good, or bad when it comes to our behavior. Your morality will determine your ethics. Eth ethics literally are the principles which govern behaviors. Here's why this is important. Your behavior is who you are regardless of the image you're trying to present. Your behavior will tell it all. I can get it and say, and I'm this and I'm that, I'm this and I'm that, but you just watch a person's feet for very long and it's going to tell you who they are. Behavior is the mirror in which everyone shows their character. Let's do a little honest self-evaluation here. Are, are we ready? It's hard to write some of these. Would you lie to protect an image of yourself that isn't real? Would you tell a half-truth to preserve your reputation? Would you do things in secret that you would be embarrassed if your wife or husband or parents or small group leader or your pastor or your kids found out about? Do you steal time from your boss by playing games or doing social media at work? Well, I get a break, you know, I, I don't have to work constantly. I'm... Would you withhold your tithe? because you went out too many times or spent too much money this week. Now, Marcus, you're just meddling now. I know that's what people do. There's no such thing as a private life. Who you are, <clears throat> you are who you are when no one is looking. The question is, who are you? And by virtue of that, whose are you? Are you God's son or daughter with his DNA or image? Or are you something else altogether? Matthew 7, chapter 42, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 7, verse 42 through 44. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I have come here from God. I have not come on my own, God sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding on to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Oh no, Jesus said you aren't like God because you don't hear, you don't acknowledge the truth he speaks. He's not talking about an auditor, auditory ability or even mental recognition. He's talking about behavior. We know this because what he says that they are of another father. They want to carry out another's desires. Their behavior was the evidence of this true image. I said earlier, behavior is the mirror in which everyone shows their character. Whose character are you showing? There are two choices. Two images, which every one of us can display. Gods are our enemies. We choose. We were created to fully know life by becoming who you were meant to be. But before you can do that, you must honestly answer the question, who are you? And whose are you? Here's our application here, and I'm speaking to myself. And I'm probably the only one here that needed to hear some of this, and that's okay. Confess to listening to the second voice. Confess to being double-minded. Repent and commit to locking down every thought which exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Seek to know God and his character that it may be may and will be the only voice that matters. Mm -hmm. You see, our lives are a product of our daily choices, our relationships, our finances, our health, our impact on others, our family dynamic, 
Our mental well-being are all products of our daily choices. And that is why we must choose wisely all day, every day. But what is wise? Obviously, whatever causes the image of God to be displayed through me is the wise thing, the wise choice. Get in his word and you read. I have so many guys say, well, I don't understand it. He didn't tell us we had to understand it. He will help with that. But just read it and read it and read it and read it. And y'all have heard me say, I think I've even heard Pastor Tony say, you know, when they're teaching counterfeiters, they don't give a bunch of fake money to play with and, and find out what's not. They, all they let them handle is real money because they want to be so familiar with the real and the true that they, they instantly know something that's not. <coughs> John 10, 10, that these purposes to steal and to kill and destroy, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. God's plan for our rich and satisfying life was and is to give us his image, for us to live through his image. It's the other voice, the other image, what leads us to shame and ultimately regret. Remember, God gave you an image before he gave you a job. Image comes first. Try to operate in your gifting outside of the image of God and through any other image and you will break things. Things will go wrong. So every day we are faced <clears throat> with a thousand choices and in all cases there are two voices, two images for us to choose from and we know which image leads to life and we have chosen to follow God. I read where a youth pastor taught a little principle that has proven to be very helpful in his students, he said, you make a decision once for the rest of your life, you just manage that decision. For his youth at that moment, it was, well, I will not have sex before I'm married. Out of that becomes what's God's best for us. It prevented regret. It prevented hurting others. For them, it prevented never having trouble with thoughts of comparison in their future with their spouse. And from that point on, their job was to manage that decision. And you say, how does one do that? Well, a whole lot of smaller decisions came into play for them. Where's the line of physical contact and relationships stop? How far is, to these students, how far was the, <clears throat> how far is too far before you reach the point of no return? How much a long time in a car parked by the lake can one have and still maintain the character one is committed to become? The principle works in every area of life. You choose the image, then you manage the choice. It just so happens that the primary role of us on this planet from the very beginning has been the management, first of self and then of everything else. Our primary role of man in management is to God's values. And how do we do that? We discern the voices. Discern the voices. And manage the choices. God gave us something to be and then something to do out of it. Image and character and then management. And from the perspective of the character and values and principles and ethics, discern the voice and manage the choice. Genesis 3, it says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat of the tree of the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat, it, eat, fruit. <clears throat> we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. But God did say you must not eat from the tree, the tree that was in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. So just get in his word. What does God say about self? Identity, poverty, honesty, kindness, charity, managing our money, parenting, forgiveness, work, or any compromising situations. If you don't know what he said, you can be operating out of the wrong image. And if you operate out of the wrong image, you will definitely get the wrong results. If you're going to be like God, you better know what God said. 
And how do we discern that voice and make the right choice? It begins with knowing what he said <clears throat> and believing that his ways leads to a life full. Read the word. Ask God before you make a decision. Once you know what God says, you can choose to be conformed to the image of his son. Choosing rightly begins with knowing right. Most people don't choose to mess up their lives. They don't make their choices intentionally to destroy their relationship or their marriage or their kids. They just don't know the difference sometimes with making that one, in their mind, one small wrong decision <clears throat> and what it can lead to. They can't discern the voices to manage the right choices. As I wrap this up for today, Here's some words of practical wisdom from Apostle Paul. In Colossians 3, verses 1 through 4, it says, Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the reality, realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Verse 2, Think about the things of heaven, not the things of the earth. For you died to this life, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. Set your focus, fix your thoughts on the things of God. Why? Because the image leads to life. When Christ is revealed through your life, the world will see him. Verse 5 says, So put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust and evil desires don't be greedy for a greasy per greedy person is an idolater worshiping the things of this world because of these sins the anger of god is coming <clears throat> you used to do these things when your life was still a part of this world verse 8 but now is the time to get rid of anger rage malice behavior slander and dirty language don't lie to each other for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds wicked deeds put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn how to know your creator and become like him verse 11 in this new life it doesn't matter if you are a jew or a gentile circumcised or uncircumcised barbaric uncivilized slave or free christ is all that matters and he lives in all of us <clears throat> christ and his image is all that matters. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you, Father. We thank you for your word. We just ask that you write it deep in our hearts. Just lead us and guide us this week, Father, in every thought, every decision that is made. We look to you in everything we say and do. Father, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.